Alright. Hello. And welcome back to Zelda, A Link to the Past. Last time we started out the game, did a lot of exploration, completed the first dungeon, and made our way here made our way way here to the second one. The Eastern Palace. Of course, in the part remake, part new game, A Link Between Worlds. You go through this desert palace much later in the game. And it's a lot different too, but... Anyways... Bemo statues! Who in this game, you cannot kill, unlike later games where you can put a bomb next to it. Here, no, you can only avoid them. Or later block their beams with a shield, but actually wait a minute. I think this I'm not gonna need the book for quite a while now. Oh, just the map. Okay. I was thinking it was a key. Oh, well, that's right. The key's in this room. You need the Pegasus boots. Kind of like how you got the book to even get into this dungeon. Hmm. Hey, you're not supposed to be able to get me in the doorway. Guess I wasn't far enough in. Yeah. I mean, that used to be a good way of avoiding enemies. Just hide in the doorways. Like in the first game, whiz robes that flew around the room are one of the few that could actually get you while standing in the doorway. Dang it. Oh, come on, really? I can't die in this dungeon. Well, there's the big key. There's that stupid beep that's gonna drive me nuts. At least I shut off the beep. Any more hearts under these things? Nope, don't look like it. Okay, fine. Power glove. Haha, -ha, you miss. Oh, they didn't. Oh, 
cool. One more heart container. Well, I was at full health for two seconds. Damn bird. Oh goody, more floor tiles. Actually, can't really say more. The first time on this playthrough. Well, it helps if you're facing the right way when you try to hit them. One of these. Okay, guess not. Oh, it's right there. health for the boss battle. Ah, shoot. Probably should have, probably should have got a blue potion now that I think about it. Repl or replenish magic. Of course, first of many to follow puzzles in Zelda where you light the torches to make something happen in that room. Hey, now for the dungeon boss. Ooh, I missed. Oh, how did that miss? Oh, I suck at this. What? How did that miss? You cheat game. Well, I got one of them at least. Yeah, they only take two hits with the ice rod. Too bad the ice rod takes up so damn... So much damn magic, though. Well, you get like what five shots off with it. I mean, later you get a magic upgrade, half magic, but that's not until much later in the game. One land mola left. Oh, you dirty rat. Gotcha. I got a little exploration before I go for the last dungeon. Oh, quit walking into everything, will ya? Oh, sure. Ow. That looks like it hurt. Having the flute for fast travel would be convenient right about now. Actually. Yeah, 
Eh, never mind right now. Come back here and get more rupees later. What? How did that hit me? Oh, me. Yeah. Ow. Link's gonna end up with a concussion at that rate. Bonking into everything. And again, why is the Cake Rico Village team playing at my house? I'm quite some distance from the village. Get out of the way. Hey, shoot arrows at me, will ya? I don't think so. are giving out free samples here. things I just killed is supposed to be little baby freaking manhandle us. Boss of level three in the first game. Well, level three first quest. Mini boss like, what, three times in level eight first quest? For 500 rupees. Clippers. Of course, in this game, you have to pay for them. In the other games, you, you know, there are quest items you get for talking to someone or helping someone. Now I can swim. Which you don't need to do right now, but later in the game they'll be you know, it'll be more necessary.
throw something in. Sure, throw my items away. Why not? No, not the bow and arrow. That's much later in a different location. Yeah, that's one of them. <coughs> oh, it's a fairy fountain. Okay. Hmm. Upgraded boomerang. Not that you need it in this game. Again, the only official Zelda game that you actually need the upgraded boomerang in is Oracle of Seasons. Because the upgraded boomerang has, has that function where it can change directions mid-flight, which you need to solve some of the puzzles in the last three dungeons. All of the other games that like this one, the upgraded boomerang may be nice to have, but you don't absolutely need it. Frick, you don't even need the standard issue boomerang, let alone the upgrade to it. Actually, wait a minute, what am I doing? There's one other item we can upgrade there. I almost forgot. No, sadly not the sword. That Again, that can be upgraded later, but not here. Not now, unfortunately. Yeah, that. No, it's basically like the like the level two magic sword in the first Zelda game. Okay. Oh, get in there! Eh. There we go. Back to well, actually not back. I haven't been here yet on this place, too, but over to Lake Hylia. Much later, you can lift this up. Yeah. Of course, I'm not looking forward to what's in there, but yeah. For right now. Oh, sure, throw my money away. Okay. Gotta throw a hundred in. Too bad they don't have the option of throwing all 100 at once instead of just 20 rupee increments five times over. As far as I know, that doesn't matter for anything. That, you know, you'll have good luck, you'll have bad luck, you'll tear up. Again, as far as I know, that doesn't make a difference in any way. I mean, I have heard, I've heard fan theories that, you know, if it says you got bad luck, you're going to have it have a tough time winning mini games or something like that. I don't know if that's true or if that's just that fan theory. But... Okay, one more time. And there's 100. Can upgrade five more bomb, bomb carrying capacity or five more arrows. Right now your maximum is 10 bombs and 30 arrows doing this over and over again you can upgrade that to 40 bombs and 70 arrows 30 more for each of them but that takes a ton of rupees seeing as how it's 100 for just five all right do that one more time well two more times Yeah, see, now they at least have 50. Not quite as good as it would be if they had just had a 100 option. But at least now it's 50. It only takes two times instead of five. 
so you can throw the 100 in a little quicker. Again, they would have done better to just give you the option of throw all 100 in at once and be done with it, but no. That'd make too, that'd make too much sense. That'd be too convenient. I think I'll stick with bombs. All right. I'll do the rest of this off screen between videos. Of course, there's that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I don't think I can show that in here. Yeah. There's that. Those rocks. That. Oh. that I lifted up over there that has the 10 pots, a blue rupee under each of them, 50, 50 rupees in total. You can go in there, collect all 50 rupees, leave, go back in, collect all 50 rupees, rinse and repeat over and over again to max out your rupees at 999. Then come back here. I'll be doing a lot of that between videos. Unless I forget between now and then, by the start of the next video, yeah, I'll have that maximized 40 bombs, or 50 bombs, and 70 arrows, whatever it is. But for now, moving on. What's this one little shallow spot here for? Somebody just camping out under the bridge? Okay. Alright, another empty bottle. That's three of them. Only one left to find. Of course, I'm not getting that one anytime soon. Well, that depends on if you play the game in suggested order, or if, like me, you sequence break a ton later on. If you play it in suggested order, yeah, it's going to be a long time before you get that final empty bottle. For me, on this playthrough, a little longer, just not quite as long. Since I plan to do a lot of sequence breaking when it becomes a possibility to do so. Actually, what am I doing? I don't want that on there. Waste that potion. Other points of interest here, potentially speaking. Uh, where is it? Somewhere around here. Yeah, right there. Can't get that yet. Not for a while. That heart piece that's up there on that upper ledge. Gotta find another way to get to that. Alright. Get out of my way. Don't make me kill you. Take a little shortcut now that I can swim. Well, not too much of a shortcut, actually. But... Actually, wait a no, no, right up here. getting those confused. The one on the upper right corner is the one you have to dash it to. But I can't even get close enough to that for a while yet. Anyways. Uh, 
Oh, three more upgrades back at that fairy fault. Actually, hold on. Good. Good. Thank you. Back up to full health. Okay. For how long remains to be seen, but... Well, at least they start you off near the end of this tunnel. Be kind of annoying if when you drop down there like that, they start you back off at the beginning of the whole tunnel. You had to go through that whole thing a second time. Yeah, back here again. I'm surprised. I'm surprised the, the soldiers haven't thought to look in here. I mean, she's been here since the start of the game, practically. Oh no, there can't possibly be, be anybody in this building. Let's move on. We'll look, we'll commence our search for Zelda somewhere else. Yeah. Nobody here. Right. Anyway, that's about it. I mean, like I said, I could go back down to that fairy fountain and spend these 300 rupees. I could go buy another potion or two, but nah, for now, I'm not going to do either. I'm going to die here, that's what I'm going to, at least not plan to. For now, I'm just going to slowly begin making my way to the next dungeon. There's not much left to do around here anyways, except for, like, yeah. oh, get out of my way, cactus. Begin making my way up Death Mountain. Which luckily is nothing like Death Mountain of the previous game. I mean, I didn't mind Death Mountain in Zelda 2, but apparently a lot of people to this day do, so yeah. Too late, I'm already involved, dude. What do you think I'm doing here? Think I'm here just to help you? Turn right. Oh yeah, that's turn right from Link's perspective. So yeah, that is or down in the gamer's perspective, but yeah. Well as soon as you shut up, old man! I hate those guys. And again, why are there always rocks falling on my head in every single Zelda game at some point in the game? Huh. Amir? Okay, where's that lady I gave this to to get the life spell? Oh, wait, no, that was the last game. This game, the mirror, is much more important than just some little trivial fetch quest to get a magic spell. Granted, in Zelda 2, you know, I lost my mirror under the table. You go to the house, the first house in the next screen, under the table, there's the mirror. You go back and give it to her, opening the way to the life spell. Without a doubt, the most used magic spell in that game, sure, but I mean, that was the only purpose for the mirror. You only used it that one time. Here, it serves a much more useful purpose. You'll be using it a lot. Not so much right now, but later in the game.
Actually, just out of curiosity, what is this place? Some alternate tunnel? I was just wondering. I was just wondering what this cave was because in the <clears throat> Super Metroid, A Link to the Past randomizer that I tried like six different seeds of before giving up, this was one of the tunnels that led from, from Zelda back to Super Metroid. Which usually means useless cave on a normal playthrough, so just out of curiosity, I was wondering what was in here since I never. <clears throat> since I don't remember ever going into that cave. Like I said in the last video, I haven't completely given up on the Link to the Past Super Metroid randomizer. Just taking a little break from it, because six tries, six seeds as they call them, all six of them, had to give up on it because they put key items in areas you either need that item to get to, or you need to be a damn good speedrunner at bomb jumping and wall jumping, and I suck at both, so yeah. Just gave up and started a new one. And after the sixth time, I'm like, I love the idea of having my two favorite Super Nintendo games on one game, but yeah, screw this, I'll come back to it sometime later. That and the fact that, you know, like I said, I haven't even done a YouTube playthrough of the main game, yet here I am doing a randomized The Link to the Past first, so yeah. Anyways. <clears throat> oh goody, I'm Bunny Link. Why do I turn to a rabbit? Silly rabbit tricks are for kids. I mean, Fine, you dumb rabbit, you can keep your tricks. I never liked them even as a kid anyways. Yeah, you can't use any of your items in this form. Except for the mirror, for some, some perp, somehow you can use that. Damn you, video game logic. If I can't use any other item, how can I use the mirror? Makes sense, will ya? Of course, they had to do it that way from a game programming standpoint. Otherwise, you, know, you wander in here, you're dead. Well, you're not dead, but you might as well be because you can't do a damn thing in here. <clears throat> so yeah, from a game programming standpoint, I get why they did that. But story and logic perspective, it's like, how can I use my mirror when I can't use any other item I have? Or you could argue, you know, you're not really using it, you're just looking into it, so it's not like you're waving it at anybody or attacking anybody with it, you're just looking into it. Anyways, not much else to do up here right now but going to the third dungeon. The Tower of Hera. Not that they tell you that on the screen here, but... Of course, the start of another gimmick in Zelda that'd be oft repeated. The red switch, blue switch. Of course, here it's more yellow or orange than red. But you... <coughs> so many Zelda games, especially the 2D ones, would implement this gimmick. Well, you're seeing it here first. Yeah. Like I said, so much of so much of what's become customary in Zelda games began with this one. You thought I was exaggerating? Well, yeah. Does it look like it? Don't you try to roast me. Oh. Ooh. 
Oh, goody. This is where the attacking floor tiles idea gets annoying. In the last dungeon, you added in a couple of those rooms, but as you saw in my playthrough of that dungeon, you could just, if you know where the key is hidden, just quickly grab the key and leave that room in a matter of, what, two seconds? Here, yeah. And unlike later Zelda games that have this gig, Ocarina of Time, to name one of them, you can't just hold your shield out and easily deflect these things. Yeah. Making it much more annoying in this game. I mean, again, I don't mind that gag so much in Ocarina of Time where you can just hold your shield out and stand there in one spot and deflect all of them. Like that, what, like, room or two in the Fire Temple of Ocarina of Time. Anyways, light the torches. Like they never, ever do that puzzle again for the rest of Zelda history. Actually, wait a minute. Um, oop, not what I had in mind, damn it. Stood there a little too long. Oh well. One way of getting back to the entrance to the dungeon. Not the way I had intended to, but it works, I guess. Oh, these things. Not so bad when you're backed up against a wall like this. They can't send you. No, they can't send you flying back in the opposite direction. One of the. What am I going to do? Go inside the wall? Actually, hold on. Go back. Is there any hearts under these jars? Nope. Well, go! What the hell? Actually, I want the orange ones down. And again, yes, I realize they're supposed to be red. Like most of the other games that have this color variant puzzle, it's blue and red, not blue and orange. But Want the orange puzzle or the orange blocks down for the floor just below the boss room. No hearts? Oh wow, one. Oh well. One is better than none, I guess. Come here, you. Breathe fire somewhere else. Oh. Okay. See, I think that's good the way it is. Yeah. Okay. Hit that. Upper portion of this hole, drop down, and end up here. The only way you're getting into this little corner, well, not really corner, but this portion of the floor, to get the dungeon item. Yeah. Now you won't change into Bunny Link in the Dark World, making this one of the most useful 
yet item, one of the most useful items in the game since a good portion of the game is in the dark world. Without this, yeah. not much you can do as Bunny Link except for gaze into the mirror and morph back to the light world. Yeah. You're gonna need this item so much so that later in the game, when you end up in the dark world, the first real time, not counting just now earlier, Saharasrala will basically tell you, if you didn't already find it, he'll basically tell you to come back here and get it then, if you didn't already, like I did. I don't remember the exact dialogue, but something about I said you don't have, you, know, you need to go back and get it. You know. catching that since I do have two unused empty bottles And as for the rest of my health now, that's why I wanted these orange blocks down. Each one of these pots has a recovery heart underneath it. Granted, you can only get it once. But... Now, for arguably, potentially speaking, hypothetically speaking, the most annoying boss of this entire game. Not because of its difficulty and how much damage it can do or how many hits it takes, but because of the simple fact that if it hits you and knocks you over the side of the ledge and into the floor below, the battle restarts once you get back up here. You could have hit it five of the six times necessary to defeat it. Doesn't matter. That happens. You're back to square one. The battle starts over again and again and again. Yeah. Again, hypothetically speaking, making this potentially the most annoying boss battle in the entire game. Ah, then I walked into it myself. Oh, yeah, sure, because, yeah. See what I mean about annoying? Of course, that was my own fault. That wasn't, I kind of backed into that myself, trying to avoid him. Well, I'll try this a few times, but I might end up editing some of this out. takes too long. I hate to do that, especially for a boss battle, but... I didn't fall down to a second, down two floors this time. Yeah, I 
hate this boss. At least in Link's Awakening, he's not as annoying. Same with the part remake, part new game, A Link Between Worlds. I mean, there he takes a few more hits, but at least the potential of this crap isn't so, so likely. Actually, I'm not even going to bother with the spin attack. I don't think it does any more damage. Alright. Take that troll dorm, as some fans call you. Sorry for editing some of that out, but I hate that boss. So damn redundant. Wouldn't be so bad if you know you get sent you get pushed down to the floor below. The game remembered how much progress you made. You know, he hit it twice. You, you know, he still had that two hits of damage done to him to get back up there. But no. <coughs> Anyways. That's the third dungeon. <coughs> <coughs> Got all three pendants now, as the game just said. Hmm. Wait a minute, I forgot all about this. I was only thinking about going to the next dungeon. Forgot all about this whole sequence. Granted, right, there's only another heart piece to it, but still. Of course, that's the last heart piece I'm getting for a while, till after the first major plot twist event, which actually isn't that far away now since I've already done the third dungeon. Bats or Keys, if you're thinking Zelda enemy names. Actually, wait a minute, I don't want to do that. You bounce in there, hit that, and bounce right into that hole. Unless you're fast enough to stop it. But now we go to the Lost Woods. And this sequence coming up is much different. In the part remake, part new game, A Link Between Worlds. I mean, it's nice that they change things up a bit, whereas here you just go get the Master Sword and that's it. Whereas in A Link Between Worlds, it's a little bit of a puzzle involved. But that puzzle can get a little annoying. At least for me. Three rounds, first round, follow the one. Second and third round go the opposite direction that, that they go and I mean it's an interesting idea just the and yes I do plan to do a playthrough of A Link Between Worlds sometime in the next you know few months I mean it's not going to be in any time in the near future because after this is Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons, Minish Cap for Zelda games. Sooner or later, I'd like to do some of those Zelda classic fan games, if OBS would ever capture those. There's a whole like, half dozen or more of those I do playthroughs of. Anyways, once you've got all three pendants, Cool, the Master Sword, Excalibur. Telepathetically, I mean. Uh, 
Of course, again, this was the first game where it was actually called the Master Sword instead of just some unknown, unnamed magical sword like the first game. Or not, didn't even have a name in the second game, Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. Just some sword Link had. This was the first game where it was called the Master Sword, and that name is obviously stuck. Even the newest, well, not counting like Cadence of Hyrule Crossover, and Age of Calamity, Hyrule Warriors, you know, and the newest game, Breath of the Wild. Yeah. Or frick, even in the aforementioned Age of Calamity, it's still called the Master Sword. So yeah. Even though the debate still goes on whether or not Age of Calamity is even canon, official. Story-wise, I think it is. Gameplay-wise, no, it's like a Hyrule Warriors game. Personally, I don't really care because I'm not a big fan of Age of Calamity. I mean, I tried to get into it because of the Breath of the Wild story tie-ins, but again, at its core, it's still Hyrule Warriors slash Dynasty Warriors. Big whoop. I mean, if you like that kind of gameplay, to each their own, but the... Okay, so now we go to the castle. At least that's the next story destination. Oh, yeah, that's right. I don't. Never mind. What am I thinking? I don't have an empty bottle that's still empty. Duh. How soon I forget? Yeah. Dumbass me? Idiot that I can be sometimes. Okay, well, in that case, um, or is there a fairy fountain around here? Oh, well, never mind. See, nothing to do around here. Sword upgrade. Of course. The only sword upgrade that you have to get. The Master Sword. Later in the game, there will be an option for two more upgrades. Those are completely optional. I mean, of course, I'm going to get them. There's sword upgrades in Zelda games. Like, I'm going to skip out on them. Are you crazy? Oh, I shouldn't have put it that way. I'm not saying you're crazy. But yeah. Then again, you must be if you th if you actually think I'm gonna pass up on a sword upgrade in the Zelda game. With all due respect, you crazy. Are you kidding me? I usually get those as soon as it's possible to do so. Even if, like I said before, even if like in Oracle of Ages and he's leaving level four dungeon after getting the switch hook before even finishing the rest of the dungeon so I can go complete the trading sequence. There's a sword upgrade involved. Of course I'm going to do it. Anyways, I think that'll do it for now. Actually, no, never mind. I don't... I think... I don't think Hyrule Castle Towers will take that long. Shouldn't, anyways. Barring some unforeseen setback. And now we go to the towers. Last time we were here, we went the opposite direction. First to the dungeons and then through the sewers. Oh, what a stinky smell. Now that we have the Master Sword, cut through the barrier and go up the tower.
And as far as I know, you do need the Master Sword. I mean, I know there's a lot of talk in Zelda fandom about the game being glitched in the way that you can use the bug catching net for other things that work, you know. As far as I know, none of that glitchy stuff works here. It actually has to be the Master Sword. The bug catching net or an empty bottle will not work. Sword beams. Kind of weird that in the first two games that predated this one, you had sword beams right from the start of the game. Well, at as long as you were at full health. But in this game and the next game, Link's Awakening was only after getting the level two sword upgrade, be it the Master Sword in this game or the Noble Sword in Link's Awakening. Well, the Noble Sword in the original Black and White Link's Awakening in the Game Boy or Game Boy Color DX remake. Granted, that same sword in the more recent Switch version of Link's Awakening, I think it was called, renamed the Koholint Sword, if I'm not mistaken. Of course, this has to be a key. I mean, otherwise this whole thing is impossible, but... Oh good, I can actually see where I'm going this time. Oh, never mind, I'm just thinking out loud. Like I said before, the last time I played this through this was in that ill-fated randomizer, Super Metroid Link to the Past randomizer, where I didn't have the lantern yet, so I was trying to just kind of stumble my way through here. Or actually, I had the fire rod, that's what it was. Yeah. But since there's no torch, yeah. For a lot of this, I was just trying to stumble my way through in the dark. Which luckily worked in this room since there's several porches in this room. But I ended up dying in this room anyway because of the bats enemies and the soldiers I just killed, not being able to see them until... Okay, nothing else in this room. So let's just go on to the next. I do need to fight these guys. Never mind. I was thinking I could just ignore these guys too. Oh, now I can. Watch up my way. There goes my sword beams. Damn it! Give me my sword beams back. Shoot. Oh, poopy. There we go. Sword beams. Granted, technically, they do less damage than the sword itself does. But... <coughs> oh, 
Well, then I lose them again anyway, damn it. Oh well, fine. I'm almost to the end anyways. Yep, just at the end of this room. You fall down. Go, ouch. We made it. Yep. And I'm just going to stand here and let him do this. I'm not going to move a muscle. Even as he's lifting his arms up and enchanting this, casting this spell or whatever it is. I'm just going to stand here and let him do this. Some hero I turned out to be. Not. Where do you think you're going, coward? Get back here. Now we have the continuation of what the fourth boss in Zelda 2 Adventure of Link started. The idea of projecting or hitting his own projectiles back at him to do damage. Of course, with Zelda 2, it was a reflect spell on your shield. Here, it's, it's your sword. And of course, the idea would be popularized to the extreme with Ganondorf and Ocarina of Time, not once but twice, Phantom Ganon in the Forest Temple and the actual Ganondorf battle in Ganon's castle at the end. Of course, it helps if you do it right. One down, five to go. Now when he stands there in the middle like that, doesn't turn to face you. Yeah, get out of the way. Half dead. Nice try, dude. Too bad I'm not dumb enough to fall for your trick. Alright, one more hit. Oh, 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 hey. That's a little too close, Buster. Oh, then I... Well, that could have been it right there if I had wondered it. Gotcha. Of course, I think storyline-wise, he thought this was the perfect trap. Trap you in the dark world where you become Bunny Link, helpless, with no way out. He didn't bargain on the fact that you had both the magic mirror and the moon pearl by now. He probably figured he cast you aside and he was done with you. You were never going to be a threat ever again. To the end of time. What little he knows, eh? Well, as soon as you shut up, I can actually get moving. 
blah 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 yak yak oh he does know how to shut up what a concept anyways welcome to the dark world at least now we got the moon pearl of course like I said earlier if you didn't get the moon pearl from the tower of Hera third dungeon Sahasrala, the big mouth that talks forever, would tell you, would continue to talk to you and tell you that you need to go back and get it. And speaking of getting things, another hard container, never a bad idea here because enemies here can hit for a ton of damage. Holy crap. Anyway, that's where I end this video. Pick it up from here next time as we explore the Dark World, the former Sacred Realm. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.